Okay, so uh, this is us right there on Facebook. And uh, this is not going to be about Facebook. This is going to be about social media in general. But one of the biggest phenomena in, uh, in social media right now, uh, social networking, is Facebook. Uh, but there are many, many other possibilities, as we've seen. Um, today, um, we will be talking about disliking the like. Again, that's a reference to Facebook, but that could apply to any social network. My name is Raoul Boers. I teach here. I'm a lecturer in uh, content management and uh, also social media, uh, and especially the appliance of social media and uh, knowledge sharing, somewhat akin to uh, a previous speaker. Um, and this is my colleague. Hi, I'm Nusa Nina. I lecture here in information and media law, so I have a legal background. So this is where we meet in this paper, combining the views of actually the users and um, well, the lawyers. Yes, it's called Disliking the Like, and um, it has a, 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 a subtitle, and that's, uh, we thought that sounded really uh, snazzy, so. User policy change and the perception of the internet as a democratic medium, because we want to talk about uh, how uh, perception of the internet as a de democratic medium is changing, and is, uh, is basically problematic, and has seen as problematic, especially the last year or so, in all kinds of uh, media rows. Uh, in, in regard to social media. So, okay, um, I would like to start by telling you, um, or actually introducing you to uh, Willem Popelier, a Dutch photographer and artist, and he is especially interested in um, the way people portray themselves themselves online, so especially especially the digital portrait. Um, when he, used a lot of, he uses a lot of found images, and um, what he actually found on an uh, Apple computer in an Apple store in a showroom, uh, 153 pictures of these girls you can see here, which he has anonymized by the pink dots. Um, so over 150 pictures and two movies in the course of one hour in um, a day in August in 2009. And he was intrigued by these two girls. He was like, who are these girls? Why are they making all these pictures? So he decided to um, try and trace them online. He could. He found their Twitter feeds. Um, so he actually made an art project out of it because he's interested in digital narcissism. So also commenting on digital narcissism, showing if you put all these things online, people can find you. And they actually put themselves, these, this collection of pictures, on their own social networking, networking sites. But in the meantime, he put them on his website. Um, uh, Amsterdam-based photography museum phone found this an interesting project and decided to expose um, these pictures in their museum. So in last year, there were about over 150 pictures of these two girls in a museum, and they didn't know about this at all. In the meantime, there was also a computer actually, uh, a printer actually printing out the tweets real time. So there's an enormous collection of paper of tweets and these pictures. Um, so these girls were completely unaware blissfully tweeting away um, until one of um, their friends actually texted them saying, hey, you're all over phone. What's going on? And these girls were like actually sitting with their, with their mom, one of them, and the mom was like shocked and saying, okay, this is what I told you. Um, you shouldn't be putting all these things online. This is private. You have to be careful. And the two girls actually found it pretty cool to be in a museum. So here you see actually a bit of a difference in, in, in age, it's a generation gap in between, you know, um, different generation uh, thinking about privacy, uh, being aware of what to put online, and the current generation who isn't as literate with the media, uh, what can you put online? Is it okay or not? And should it matter at all? So, actually, the new digital narcissists. Yes, um, uh, on that um, point, um, Narcissism uh, is uh, a, a very hot item already since the 70s when uh, Christopher Lash, a, uh, a cultural philosopher and uh, scientist, wrote a book uh, on uh, cultural of the, called The Culture of Narcissism. And that book was actually about um, how we are developing continuously towards a society where uh, the self is uh, uh, very important. And 
a bit over important and very uh, much exaggerated. And some critics, uh, critics of, of social media and social networking um, say that you know, social networking is basically only showcasing the self, actually like, very much like these girls showcasing, them, showcasing themselves in a, in a showroom. Um, so you're basically putting yourself out there and it's not about being connected, it's not being about being uh, communicative with other people, it's about throwing everything out that you can about yourself and deriving status from that. And, um, but, um, so these, these young people, especially the millennials, people from the latter part of the 90s and young, young people today, um, they go like, what, privacy, what privacy, what, what do you mean? I don't, I don't see the problem. Um, Whereas the older generations see uh, social networking and social media uh, much more and ever more as, as something that um, also was referenced this morning by, um, by Mr. Shapiro, uh, uh, to quote Foucault, as a panopticon, where uh, everyone is connected to a platform and that you are monitored or can be monitored uh, if, if people are, are willing to do so. If, if, if you put everything online, you can be traced. So these people will be saying, privacy? What privacy? We've lost our privacy. So that's a, the, same, the same questions, but in completely different context. So this panopticon, or the, this prison, uh, where we are all uh, centered around a platform, a certain center that is the social media network, is, is ever more uh, important image that we have about social media, social, social networking. Uh, not just in Facebook, but in LinkedIn and in any other kind of uh, social environment that you have, social networking environment that you have. So what, what does this discontent, this unease with, with social networking and, and different generations, where does this stem from? Where, where, do we, where does this originate from? Well, what is privacy in the first place? <laughs> so, okay, um, back to the law. Um, defining privacy. Um, I was thinking about and looking into it, and um, I've taken a European uh, viewpoint because, of course, I'm, I'm Dutch, so I know more of the... Uh, European legislation, it's actually, um, if you look at it, it comes from uh, European Charter of Fundamental Rights. Um, it considers there's respect for private and fa family life is a basic human right. Um, so that's pretty relatable, that's offline. So if we go online, um, European legislators have already foreseen mid-90s that there were going to be problems with privacy um, as soon as enormous amounts of data could be exchanged in a very uh, fast and easy way. So also part of these, uh, this charter of uh, human rights, of fundamental rights, is the protection of personal data. Um, data that can be linked back to you in any form, so which is basically your name and address, um, but it could also be your email address, um, credit card numbers, pictures, anything that can be linked back to you. So that's when you go online, that's really thinking, if you think of privacy, you think about personal data, which can be linked back to you. Um, and also European commissioners have also said that personal data, of course, is the new oil of the internet. Your personal data is worth a lot of money online. So that's why it's interesting for a lot of people to actually acquire your personal data. Indeed, because um as uh, uh, Neusta said, um, it, can be the, it, it is the oil of the internet. These big companies, um, we are naive to think that they offer us their services for free. I mean, you're not uh, receiving a bill, you're not actually being charged, you're not paying anything, but you are paying a lot, and you actually pay much more than you think because you pay with your data, which is the oil, or it could well be the snake oil of, of, uh, of the internet because you are offering parts of yourself to these platforms. That does sound a bit horrifying, but you know, that's what you do. Um, what is social media the link to privacy? Um, this is an example of how not to, uh, how to fall victim to, to, uh, to, this, uh, to, this, to social media. This is uh, uh, Ashley Payne, and she was a teacher, was a teacher in, uh, in uh, Georgia. And she was, uh, she was fired because she, was, uh, she took a snapshot of herself while on vacation in Dublin with a pint of uh, lager in her hand. And she posted it on her wall on Facebook. She was fired because she was a role model as a teacher, because you all know that teachers don't drink, right? <laughs> I mean, obviously. Um, and she was fired. So that's, um, you know, posting something on a, on a Facebook wall has consequences in real life, you know? 
And that was uh, very innocently done. But there are also people who are just plain dumb. This is uh, a, a, a well-known internet meme. Um, someone called Connor Riley got a job offer by Cisco. And she tweeted, um, Cisco just offered me a job. Now I have to weigh the utility of a fatty paycheck against the daily commute to San Jose and hating the work. Well, well, she lost the job before she even had it, so that's, uh, that's very good. So that's also something, well, it's plain stupid, of course. Uh, these people also lost their jobs. Uh, also a very well-known internet meme. Uh, on YouTube, Domino's Pizza employees showing what they do with food before you are going to eat it as a customer. Okay, we're not going to watch too much of that because we will not be hungry tonight. Um, that's something that, you know, that's just plain stupid. The last two things were just plain stupidity, but it's very, uh, it raises an important point because when you um, are online, you have to be aware that you're online, and as professionals, we oftentimes, I hope, we oftentimes are aware of what we do online, but m most people do not or do not care enough, um, are not concerned about their futures, and just post anything online that they want to post. Um, in a Dutch um, a TV program, it's an ombudsman program uh, called Radar, um, they did a survey and they found that 90% of Dutch viewers are aware of the fact that they can change their privacy settings in various uh, social networking uh, platforms. Um, most of these people do not. They are aware that they are there, but they not, don't use them. Um, also, 60% of those people are aware that their employers and their co-workers are monitoring them on these social networks. And most people were just okay with that. But when you use these networks, you must be aware that you have to use them cautiously because anyone can see what you post if you do not change your uh, default privacy settings. On Twitter, unless you're profile is private, of course, the whole world can see your updates. Of course, you can, if you, if you choose to make the Twitter feed private, you will lose a lot of the actual uh, functions of, of Twitter, because you want them to not be private. You want people to see what you do with Twitter. So, you know, that's counter to the function of, of Twitter. Um, also, high-profile professionals, certain U.S. politicians tweeting certain tasty pictures of themselves, snapshots. Um, well, done, and of course, these were all uh, being punished by the public. So keep an eye on what you do with the social platforms. Also, when you use Facebook, for instance, if you have a Facebook wall, I have blocked the fact, I blocked the possibility of other people posting on my wall. Because I'm a narcissist and I want to post my own things on my wall, of course. But uh, also because I have students in my friends list, and I don't want students to be posting on my wall which you can say, is it, is it smart to have students in your friends list because you're a lecturer, not a friend of your students? But I'm a friendly guy, so... Anywho. Um, it's important to be aware and, and actually act on these privacy settings. For instance, this is Facebook privacy settings in 2005, the default settings. Almost all the things were private. All the information that you stored about yourself, almost all of that was private except for your name, maybe your picture or your gender. The rest was pretty much private. Over the years, we see that all these blue squares uh, show that these things are less and less private. Things you put on the wall, photos you, you upload, the default setting of Facebook. These things are just open for everyone to see. So you have to change them yourself. A lot of people know it, but mm, don't take the time to actually do it, don't take the time to actually update these settings. A uh, nice graph made by Matt McKeon. So it's important, be aware, and also act on these settings.